only thing that matters for cramming on the SAT is the actual concepts, right? Since SAT math is so conceptual, you can actually cram for the SAT and see huge increases in your score, even if it's a tall, small time frame, right? Unlike reading where it's not conceptual and it's actually all practice based and you need more time to improve, math is conceptual. So it's not really about the time, but just if you understand the concept or not, and if you have enough practice with it, right? So you can see huge increases in your score if you follow the framework that I'm going to give you. And I actually use this framework and I got a perfect score on my second attempt on the SAT using this, improving about a hundred points in the last week, preparing for that SAT. And keep in mind, this is only going to be useful if you have a small time frame, right? The strategy is different when you have a larger time frame and you can make better grab gaps, right? You can cut them out and it's going to be easier to do so, right? So this is only for the small time frame. Okay, so hi, I'm Karthik. This is a last minute SAT math and strategy and also tips so you can improve your score as fast as possible. Okay, let's get right into it. The cost effective use of your time, right? And I say cost because it's not really cost, but what you're effectively spending here is your time. So we want to get the most out of that time. And that's effectively the key for almost every single concept where you want to improve as much as possible in the shortest time frame. It's all about the cost, right? So the math section can be broken down into many different skills, right? And you can find the breakdown of those skills either on Khan Academy, you can find them on the SAT website, you can find them wherever, right? But the idea here is that we want to see changes in our scores. So we need to figure out what specific categories that we do poorly with, right? So test, right? But I want you to test on Khan Academy, right? Because it's going to tell you specifically what skills that you struggle with. And you're going to be able to figure that out because on the real SAT, the skills that they test might not be so explicitly to you and you want to save as much time as possible. So test on Khan Academy, right? And what you need to do is do multiple of those, right? Try to figure out where you are in math in all of the skills and where you rank. And it's not going to instantly tell you all the skills, but you're going to need to figure out what portions that you do poorly with, right? Your weakest skill is going to be the one you can improve the most with the least amount of effort. So you need to stop caring about like getting full mastery in one skill because that's much more difficult than getting, let's say 70 or 80% mastery in every single skill. So that's how to use your time most effectively. But if we want to see like the, what the specific skills are, you have to use a resource like Khan Academy because it's going to give it to you like that. All right. How do you improve fast, right? I already talked about we shouldn't care about the 100%. We focus more on the 70 to 80%, right? And this is because the most improvement in your score happens in the learning phase, right? Every question category can be organized into these phases, right? Phases where you don't know, you've never seen the concept before. Like, let's say you didn't study like trigonometry before taking the test, right? That is a completely new concept to you and you need to learn it, right? And maybe you've seen the concept in high school, but it's not ingrained and you don't fully know it, then you need to actually learn the concept again and get good with it so you can start using it in the final phase which is that last bit of percent is the mastery phase so you're making maybe some careless mistakes you're making like some small mistakes that don't relate to the concept of the problem i'm going to show you how to target those specifically but with this last phase you don't have to worry about it too much in terms of the learning right your learning should be the priority but also genuinely learn the skill right you can use online resources that are free and you can use Khan Academy, right? That's an example of one, but then practice it with as many different examples as you can find from the question bank on the SAT website or from Khan Academy, just anywhere you can find those kinds of problems. And you want to do as many examples as possible. So multiple choice question problems, word problems, like fill in the blank problems, problems where they don't give you any choices, right? Do as many of them as possible and as many differently phrased and formatted ones as possible. So you can get familiar familiarity with all the different types of ways that you can do these kinds of problems, right? Every wrong answer here, right? When you're practicing these problems, you already learned the concept. Every wrong answer is going to be a lesson. You need to figure out why, right? Why did you make this mistake? And the two reasons is either going to be a limiting portion or an incorrect portion, right? And the limiting portion is the portion that like, let's say you know everything, but you don't know how to solve for this one thing. That's a limiting portion. And that's a learning issue. You need to figure out how to be able to solve that with the information you're given. Because if the problem is solvable, which you know, it probably almost always is and is always if you're focusing on SAT examples from Khan Academy or the Sweet Bank, you need to figure out how 
how to get that with the information you have. An incorrect portion is a portion that you make mistakes on. So you did something incorrectly or you just wrote something incorrectly, right? That could be a careless mistake or also could be a, like a learning mistake. You don't know exactly how to do a certain portion and you did it incorrectly thinking it was one way, but it was another. It's not as severe as the limiting portion one, but any limiting portion mistake should be eliminated. Like you should not be making them at all if you've moved past this learning phase. You need to get to that with every single question type, right? And how you do that is you figure out what you made a mistake on. You either learn it and then you build a strategy to make sure it doesn't happen again, right? And then test that strategy, make sure they work, make sure it doesn't happen again. And also care about the conceptual mistakes, right? The incorrect portion mistakes where you mistakenly wrote a number, that's not significant for this specific skill, even though it's significant. And I will talk about it literally in the next slide. No one concept should be holding you down. You should know every single concept and fully understand it. Okay. How do you increase all the skills at once? I'm going to talk about it right now. Careless mistakes. You cannot be affording to make careless mistakes. So if I can target every single careless mistake and create a framework to make sure that that never happens again, that's going to be an extremely effective use of my time if careless mistakes are holding me back. For a lot of people in the higher ranges, it is. And even if you're not in the higher ranges, it could be cutting down a lot of points that you could be getting, right? And here are like some of the possible reasons, not necessarily yours, but you need to do a diagnostic and I'll explain how to do that. So either you're rushing the pace of the question and doing it too fast with the time pressure. You're not fully reading the question and skipping certain parts, making you do some mistake and you're overconfidence about it, right? You're overconfident that you fully got the question and you rush some of the steps. You don't fully do it out and you, your work isn't neat, let's say, and you mess up a certain thing and that you get it wrong as a result. Go into the SAT, right? With this mindset that it's going to try to trick you with every single portion, right? You need to find a way that you're not going to make careless mistakes as a result of that. If it's going to try to trick you at every portion and test something that's not actually the skill, you need to figure out why that is, right? Create a strategy that's going to help you prevent that. So if it's rushing pace, you're going to make sure to keep pace and you're going to practice that pace in your practice one week beforehand. So you get into a pattern of doing it before the SAT. You know, if it's not fully reading the question, you develop a reading strategy. So you like put your finger over every single word so that you fully read the problem and don't skip words or you highlight specific information so you don't miss that out, right? Create a strategy test it, make sure you work, make sure it actually works and helps you solve at the careless problem. So if you make a mistake again, it's not because of that careless mistake and it was conceptual and you need to focus on that. But keep in mind that you need to figure out what your limiting factor is here. And if it's careless mistakes, this is going to help you. Okay. I'm going to go through almost every single significant tip that I know that's going to actually make a difference between this timeline, right? So question priority, right? Go from easy to hard questions and you need to find which ones are easy and hard for you based on like your practice tests and know which concepts you have the least success on and the ones you have the most success on. Just crush all the ones you have the most success on and then do the hard ones later, right? And after your SAT, you can immediately start practicing practicing the hard ones. Okay. Plug in your answers, right? When you don't know if it's correct, either plug it in to make sure that it's correct or, you know, use like the answer choices given or like any sort of other additional information to plug in to see if you can get a little more information that you know, not just the answer, but a little more information, right? Use similar answer choices, right? When you have like similar answer choices that let's say they all share like um, three of them share a certain portion or all four of them share a certain portion that has to be in the answer, right? So plug that in, use that information that you know is guaranteed in the answer that you might have not known before and plug it in or implement it somewhere because it's an additional piece of information that might be useful, okay? Know the base function graphs, right? Every single graph, like exponential, square root graph, quadratic graph, linear graph, know how they're formatted. So all the types they could be written in and what variables do what on that graph, but also know the base graph. Like if it's just the graph, how does it look like? So you can find another graph. Let's say they give you one on the exam and you can see the changes and figure out what the equation is very quickly. And when you get stuck, on a certain question, right? Regardless of what the question is, it helps to sort all the information into knowing and don't know and what you need to solve. And we need to figure out all the knowing information and try to push everything in the known category. And then from the known category, use it to solve for the thing that it's actually asking for. So those three categories and separating all the information on them makes it so logistical for you to be able to know if you actually can solve it or not. Okay, finally, Based on whatever is your limiting factor, right? If it's the skills or if it's careless mistakes, you need to do as much work as like 
based on how you perform in each of those skills, right? So if the skills are your main category, like you don't make careless mistakes, but you just don't know a lot of things, push all of your effort in that and not that much in the careless mistakes. If the opposite is true, do the opposite, right? Make this proportion of like what you focus on based on your errors and focus all the effort on your errors because that's the only way you're going to make improvements, right? And if you want someone to help increase your score as much, you know, as I did, you know, check out my SAT and college private community where I host lectures and you can have one-on-one time with me to talk and discuss about the SAT and college. Thank you guys so much. And I hope you learned something today.